I'll be making a Kydex sheath for this set of knives I made in the last video. I'll be using some .060 Kydex to do this. So I've already got a pattern because this is a model that I make quite often called the Swamp Spike. And it is five inches wide when I cut it out and six inches long. This is what the pattern looks like when it's completely done. It'll also have a combat sheath attached. The first thing I want to do is lay out my kydex, get the pieces cut out, and get them ready to form. So I'm just going to lay out some lines here and simply cut them. All right, with that done, I go cut these out. I'll mark up the rest of them, do that off camera. So right now the Kydex is slightly larger length and width wise than what my pattern calls for. I do that so I have extra to work with. It's easier for me to trim off to size. Now this knife will come into this sheath and bite right in here. That is where the holding power is gonna be. It's right in behind here and it'll form a cam. So if you notice the way I shape these handles, come in here and flare out right at the end. And I do that for this purpose. It'll come over and cam right there, from top to bottom. I don't always do this on my knives. I usually bring it down here for a leather sheath and it'll cam in here somewhere when I wet mold them. But for Kydex, this is how I like to do the ends of the handles or the front of the handles. So when I heat this Kydex up, I'm gonna let it come up to about here and then I'll trim it. When I put it in the mold, that's where I want it to be. And I'll show you that when we get to it. Going on to heating Kydex, this is a sheet from the manufacturer. I always keep one around because I can't never remember. 300 to 375 degrees, that's a pretty broad range. So you have to figure out what works best for you. It takes a little bit of time to get from the oven to the press, get everything set up, make your press. So. I run mine a little toward that 375 to give me plenty of time. And if you don't get it right, you can always heat it up and redo it. It'll reform back to its original flat shape when you heat it up. It's hard to make a mistake unless you overheat it. If you overheat it, you mess up the texture and it's just no good. So the next thing we're gonna do is prepare our blade to put in the form. So for what I'm gonna do is put some painter's tape on the blade on each side. This will give it a little bit of space where it make it a little easier to get in the sheath and it's not so tight. Once you get the rivets and all that in there, it'll be too tight if I don't put a little tape on each side to give it a little space. Now this is painter's tape and you have to remember that painter's tape has water or moisture in it. So you don't wanna leave this on your blade forever. Go ahead and get your forming done and get it off of there. So even though this is stainless blades, it's high carbon. It'll rust these as well. So no matter what you do, don't leave it on there forever. All right, so you get the idea. I'm gonna do that on both sides. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and heat up the oven to around 370, something like that, and get our Kydex in, set up the press, and we'll make the first mold.
All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and set these eyelets. And I use a armor press with dies to do that. And I'll show you what I've got here, in case you're wondering. I just took a regular arbor press and bought these die kits. I'll leave a link in the description for those. So basically you got a top and a bottom die. This is the bottom and this is the top. This is for three sixteenths. These are for quarter. So I bored a hole into this ram and set the top die with a threaded set screw. And the bottom just sets in there. When I want to use a 3 sixteenths, I just put it in there and put the 3 sixteenths in the top ram. All right, if I watch, it's hot outside. I guess so, just be quiet. All right, team. So anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and set these and then we will work on the clip and fixing our thumb ramp. Now before I start doing any other fitting, I want to go ahead and clean up some of these burrs in here. I'm just using a razor to do that. Just scrape it off a little bit. We'll do a little more when we get further along. And I'll take a piece of sandpaper and I come in here. I'll clean this up a little more, like I said, later on, but right now I want to get the rust spots out. So the next thing I want to do is form the thumb ramp so you can push the blade out. And I'll be using this tool. What is that? It's a piece of antler. What? I didn't say nothing. Anyway, so back to where I was at. We'll be using this piece of antler to form our thumb ramp. I'll heat it up right here, bring it in here, and pull it. It's a lot easier to do with some leverage than it is trying to do this with your thumb. It's just a piece of antler that I rounded and polished. So let me get it heated up and we'll get that formed. All right, so let's see what we got there. I got to put the clip on here. Once I do that, I can make final adjustments, but I can tell by pinching it there that it's going to be pretty close. So let's get that in there. So I realize some of you may have some questions about this Kydex press. It's just something that I made. You can probably find similar, plenty of similar online. I know they sell them similar to this. Mine's just some hinges. I welded up a little box with some thin 
metal material here, got some plywood in there. And these are some Kydex foam that I bought and put in there. I'll leave a link in the description where you can buy this foam. It's really nothing to it. I've got a, uh, a lock on here just made with some bar that I can lock it down once I get it pressed. Works great. It's nothing fancy. It's not totally efficient, but it works. I mean, you don't have to have a press. You can just put a couple blocks together, put some weight on it or a stand on it. Uh, as long as you got that foam, it'll work. But if you've got any more questions about the press, let me know. But I'll leave a link in the description for this foam and the eyelet dies and some Kydex. All right, so we got them all done. Just push the thumb ramp, comes out of the sheath. I love that sound. But really nice. It's just biting right there. And that's more than you'll ever need to hold that knife in there. It's easy to access and put back in. These combat clips, I'll leave a link in the description where you can get them. They lock on. Once you put them on your belt, they just release, snap, and then you can lock it on your belt. There's all kind of clips you can put on. There's the ulti clip and a few different ones. Uh, the more expensive one. This one's expensive, but not like the other one. And it's just as tough. I've used these for several years. There's a lot of little nuances to making these things fit right. And it just takes some time fooling with them to get them right. And I'm not a Kydex sheath or any kind of sheath expert, but I do make them for the knives that I build. And you can always tweak them and redo them, like I said. If they don't work out right on the first go around, just uh, heat them back up, as long as you don't overheat this Kydex. I'll show you some shots here of the finished sheets, but if you've got any questions, leave them down in the comments. I appreciate you watching. I want to thank my patrons. We're going to see you on the next build.